Judaism had a number of important uh, contributions that it made to the Western understanding of human rights and freedom. One very important contribution of Judaism is the creation story set out in the Hebrew Bible. One of those qualities is that males and females were created in the image of God. That introduces a fundamental understanding of what the human is. That is the foundation for Western understandings of human dignity and one of the foundations on which an understanding of human rights has been built. A second very important part of the creation story is the notion of a creation mandate. God says, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the earth and have dominion over it. That is a really critical introduction of a number of basic Western understandings of legal relationships and the rights that attach thereto. One of them is the notion of marriage, that males and females are to come together and they are to perpetuate themselves. They are to participate in creation with God, which is what the act of procreation actually is, is creating with God the next generation. Secondly, you see built into that story a notion of property and labor, that we are to subdue the earth and have dominion over it, to participate in its cultivation, to dress and to keep the garden as the uh, later understanding of uh, Genesis lays out. And that's a really critical foundation for a basic understanding of property, a basic understanding of labor, a basic understanding of dominion, of stewardship, of trusteeship. Uh, that the Western tradition has built many of its basic uh, understandings of human rights upon. A third way that the Hebrew tradition introduces uh, basic concepts of human rights is in the story of how God encounters sinners. Uh, first Adam and Eve in the garden and then Cain and Abel, especially Cain who slaughters his, um, in the first homicide of his brother Abel. In both instances divine due process is done. God calls the people who have, been, who have sinned and asks them what they have done. He gives them a hearing. He gives them an opportunity to explain themselves and defend themselves. He gives them an opportunity to uh, be pardoned rather than visiting on them the sanction of death. He in fact allows Adam and Eve to continue with certain blessings and curses that befall them. He allows Cain to continue with a mark on his head protective mark that allows him to live among fellow men and women on the earth. And that is a, the fundamental start to an understanding of due process, that when you adjudicate a wrong, there is an opportunity for the party that's accused to participate in that adjudication. And that hearing opportunity for pardon, uh, an opportunity for remedy are, are at hand. I think a fourth critical way in which the Hebrew Bible um, lays foundation blocks for Western understandings of human rights and freedom is in the concept of covenant. Covenants are a common part of how communities get along in the ancient world, but they're a critical way by which the new community, the elect nation of Israel, is created by Yahweh. God enters into a special covenant relationship uh, with his chosen people of Israel and their representatives in Sinai. He promises them a series of things, lays out a series of basic values that need to be maintained in that society, basic laws that must be maintained, and then sets out uh, a series of expectations that, if breached, will result in divine retribution against the people. Covenants, as they're set out in the Hebrew Bible story, really are the prototypes for what the West is eventually going to call the social contract. It is a way by which the people and their rulers swear to each other and before God what they consider to be the fundamental values of their society and what they consider ultimately to be the fundamental duties and rights that rulers and subjects ultimately can enjoy, guaranteed ultimately by God.